All right, Shalom. We're the brothers of Great Millstone and Branch on Des Moines. First and foremost, we want to give all praises on and glory to Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Hashem, Rakakadash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers preaching the gospel and truth and in sincerity, all is purity. So you see the title of the lessons and title Spirit Like the Wind. It means another week out in the highways and hedges to Wadi Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh Shai, but continually giving us the spirit week in and week out to go out and prophesy the downfall of this present evil world, man. To push forth the vibration of righteousness back into the earth, and to Wadi Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah for continually giving us the uh, of His Holy Spirit to put forth these lessons, man. You know, and um, man, a a a just a beautiful time to be alive, man. It's a, a, a beautiful thing that we witnessing, man. The downfall of our enemies, as it is written in Sirach, the twenty fifth chapter. You know, all we have to do is continue to build upon the foundation that was laid. Let's start with that. Let's get First Corinthians the third chapter. You know, we just got to continue uh, uh, to push this word. And, 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 and while we're pushing this word, what should we be doing? We should be applying the things that we're speaking about within the lessons, man. You see? Because we're going to read this scripture, but this scripture goes deeper than just teaching. But uh, started at like, um, ye are the most high husbandry. I think that's verse like six or seven. It's First Corinthians chapter three and verse... Or it might be nine. It might, it, I know it's somewhere around there. Yeah, I started verse uh, nine. It says, For we are laborers together with Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Ye are Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai's husbandry. Ye are the Lord's building. Right. So it says, We are his husbandry. We are his building, man. Right. It speaks about, uh, uh, let's get that Ephesians 2 and 19. Just to show what we're building. We're building up each other, man. We're building up the body of Yahweh Shah through the spirit, right? Go ahead. This is the book of Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 19. It says, Now, therefore, are ye no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens and uh, Salakia, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of the Most High, mm -hmm. and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Yahweh Shah HaMashiach himself being the chief cornerstone. That's it. So it says we're built upon the foundation of of Yahweh Shai and the apostles, man, right? But it, it goes deeper than just teaching what they teaching. It also goes into what? Walking how they walked, man. See, that's the key thing about what? Embodying the spirit of Yahweh Shai. Because we're, we're, we're striving our best to walk in the ways of Yahweh Shai and the ways of the scriptures to the best of our ability. It goes deeper than just teaching. Because the things we speak and teach, it should, it should be uh, uh, reflected within our life, right? You can jump back to Corinthians, bro. And whatever precepts you brothers got, y'all can let it fly. I had a quick one real fast. And this is first, pre this first Peter chapter 2 and verse 5. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to Yahweh by Yahweh Shai Mashiach. So, like we're going into, we are that house that's being built up, all right? The tabernacles of David, that spiritual house, that altar. So, what? To offer up spiritual... It says in the book of Isaiah, the 19th chapter, that there will be altars in the midst of Egypt, man. That altar is what? The uh, uh, the camps, man. All right? And, and the sacrifice is us to present our body as a living sacrifice. So, every day, we're casting off the uh, uh, the thoughts of men. We're casting off the, the uh, uh, works of the flesh, making no provision for the flesh. All right, uh, 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 and trying to do everything that we can to please Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai in our thoughts, in our words, and in our actions. All right, going back into First Corinthians chapter three. I wanted to, to back you up on that. Uh, Revelation twenty one and three. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, "Behold, the tabernacle of the Most High Power is with men, and He will dwell with them, and they shall be His people, and the Most High Power Himself shall be with them, and be their power." Because you were saying about the tabernacle of, of, of David, you know what I'm saying? We are that tabernacle. And it's, it's the, like the 144,000 elect are men, you know, but just to make that point. But you got it. It's back in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse, <clears throat> verse 10. According to the grace of Yahweh, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth there upon. Right. So now a lot of times we use this scripture to show uh, to say what, man? Make sure you teaching what was taught. Right? But also what, man? We're building upon ourselves in our everyday life, man. You know, through correction, through a uh, uh, rebuke, right? Through trials and error. We're learning these different things in our everyday walk. And that's also a part of us building ourselves through the spirit, man. You see? So we also take heed of how we build, me and how we walk. How we add things to our spirit and build upon that, you know? 
So it goes deeper than just teaching, man. There's guys out there on the highways and hedges just teaching. And they teaching their ass off, man. But they fool niggas, right? When Yahweh Shah gave that parable about how the, uh, the wicked scribes and Pharisees, they clean the outside of the cup, but inside they're full of dead man's bones. Yeah, we apply that to the wicked scribes and Pharisees. We apply that to other camps. But that's applied to that, that can be applied to us as well, man. On the outward, we appear righteous, right? On the outward, we got the beard. We out there cussing out everybody, right? But when you go deeper into our personal life, now we, now we mistreating brothers, right? We doing all kind of uh, uh, madness and bullshit that we shouldn't be doing. We not receiving a rebuke. We're not receiving correction. We're walking in our own ways, right? But when you around brothers or when you at camp, you outwardly appear righteous. Those things can apply to us too, man. So that's why it's the importance of watching how we deal, watching how we walk within the spirit. You see? Because it all goes back into the renewal of our mind, man. That's the key thing within this walk of ours, man. It's the renewal of our mind. That's what King David prayed for in Psalms, the 51st chapter. He said, create me a new heart, O power, and, and, and renew within me a, a, a right spirit. I'm roughly paraphrasing what he wrote, you know, but you brothers got it. Uh, real quick, this is Sirach 37 and 19. There is one that is wise and teacheth many, and yet is unprofitable to himself. So that can apply to a man that's uh, he's going out there on the highways and byways. He's teaching. He's telling you to do this. He's telling you to do that. Well, the scribes and Pharisees is a prime, uh, prime example. The Lord even said, do what they say, but not what they do, because they were teaching correct things to a certain extent. All right. Uh, 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 keep the law. All right. Uh, uh, to the, you, know, or, you know, keep the law. But they weren't even keeping the law. You know, so that's an example of a man that, that was uh, profitable to other people. Teaching, other, teaching things that uh, uh, was profitable for them, but it wasn't profitable for itself because he wasn't applying those different things. A man that's on the highways and byways and say, you need to go hard or, 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 or and be diligent, but then all throughout the week, he's being slothful and he's being lazy. That's not being profitable to yourself, man. All right? Or you're going out on the highways and byways and say, you need to do this. You're saying you need to do that. But then throughout the week, you're not applying this and you're not, imply you're not applying that. That that would you that would be you teaching the right thing, but it's not profitable onto yourself because you're not practicing what you're preaching, and that's what we have to hold ourselves accountable to every single day, man. All right, we're teaching in these lessons, we're teaching uh, on the highways and byways, and in these videos, and whatever we're saying, we that's going to come to us first and foremost, man. The scriptures say, whatever you judge, that shall be judged onto you. Roughly paraphrasing, so if we're saying all these different things, we got to make sure that we're holding ourselves to that same standard to the best of our ability, man. Right, because it ain't the quantity of lessons that's being put out, man. It's the quality of them, man. You see? And that's what we hear, hey, that's what we focus on here at Great Millstone. That's what we were taught through the spirit from our apostles and elders, man. It ain't the the, uh, the abundance or the amount of videos you put out, but what, what the, the substance that's within them, man. You know? The sincerity that's within each and every lesson that's being put out, man. You know, but you brothers got it. I got one. This is uh, the book. This is the book of um, yeah. Job. Hold on, we can see that. Job chapter uh, thirteen and sixteen, straight to the point. It says, um, "He also shall be my salvation, for an hypocrite shall not come before him." Now it says, "An hypocrite shall not come before the Lord." Right now, the word hypocrite in the um, Edomon online, it says. Uh, a false pretender to virtue or religion, right? A, a hypocrite. And then when you jump down on the Edamon online, it brings up definitions of hypocrite uh, from WordNet. It says, a person who professes beliefs and opinions that he or she does not hold in order to conceal his or her real feelings or motives. So we can't be found out to be hypocrites, man. Hey, that's why uh, Yahweh Shai told, told the disciples uh, what? He said, uh, everything that the scribes, uh, uh, I believe he said the scribes and the Pharisees say that ye do, but do not as they do. So right, right. Right. they say these things and do them not. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, hey, that's it. And, and that's, and that's um, butchered. So, <laughs> it says, I'm going to read the definition one more time. It says, a person who professes beliefs and opinions that he or she does not hold in order to conceal his or her real feelings or motives, right? So the things that we're preaching and teaching, like the brother was explaining in our lessons, we have to uh, we have to hold ourselves to those things, man. All right? We have to make sure that we're applying it, man, or what? We could be uh, found out or guilty of being a hypocrite, you know? Like the brother brought out the example, talking about being diligent, this and that and the third, and we not doing it, or we should be doing it, uh, saying, pointing the finger, yeah, we need to do this and that and the third, and us ourselves aren't applying it, man. That's not acceptable in the sight of y'all by Shimmy Al Rashad, man. And it's in it, we'll be found out. That's the rock the first chapter. Yep, yep. Brother, want to grab that because it speaks.
speaks about be not a hypocrite in the sight of men and take good heed without speaking. Yeah. You know? And then it goes down where the brother's yeah. gonna, gonna get it. This is uh Sirach chapter one and verse uh <clears throat> um twenty-eight. It says, Yep, it says, distrust not the fear uh, of Bible could start at start at twenty seven, just 27? because yeah, that was kind of like the flavor, you know, of the week. Uh Elder Yashwama did a, a lesson called uh the fear of the Lord is is wisdom. So this would be a good precept just to start off. Kind of Sirach one, one and uh, twenty seven for the fear of the Lord is wisdom and instruction and faith and meekness are his delight. Mm -hmm. Distrust not the fear of the Lord when thou art poor and come not unto him with a double heart. So, hey, so, so like just on that twenty seven verse it says faith and meekness are his delight. The Lord is delighted in what and men having faith in him. So we if we're preaching faith in in these little different scenarios that we go through all throughout the week and in our everyday lives we have to. You, we got to uh, show our faith, man. Can't say you believe, you believe, you believe, but then when you when some type of affliction or some type of situation pops up, then you don't know what to do, all right? Just be faithful. The Lord is pleased with that. And, and, with that, and, and without faith, it is impossible to please him. It also says that he's pleased with, the, uh, uh, with meekness, man. So we can't be prideful, all right? We can't be prideful in any situation, okay? In any situation, when it comes to rebuke, when it comes to correction, we cannot be prideful. We have to be humble. We have to be meek, man. All right? Whether, whether it's giving someone correction or whether it's receiving correction. In all aspects, we have to remain humble. We have to remain meek, man. All right? Why is earth and not just pride? We're still in this flesh. We don't know if our name is on that list or not yet. So we have to still continue to remain humble and lowly. And in due season, the Lord is going to exalt the humble and lowly. All right, and reward the humble and, uh, and lowly with the whole entire earth. But first, salvation, man, being delivered from the six troubles. All right, and seven, no evil will touch us. Lord willing, we endure unto the end and continue to apply what is written. All right, that, uh, what's the point of knowing? You know every single law, but apply none of them. So what's the point of uh, uh, of knowing it? Right. You know all the precepts, but how yeah, many? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, I, I got it real fast. Real fast. It's Sirach chapter nineteen and verse 24. 24 it says he that hath small understanding and fear of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai is better than one that hath much wisdom and transgressive the law of the most high all right so um I know the apostles they always talk about uh, I forget which one of their elders that uh, said it but if you know one priest is uh, I, I rather uh, the he Lord is know. more pleased with uh, a man that had uh, that likes uh one Salakia. Like Pretty, pretty much a man that knows one precept, but he applies that precept. He's better than a man that knows all types of precepts, but applies none of them. And the brother uh, said that it was uh, King Mashad. King Mashad says that, and that's straight out the scriptures, man. Someone that has little understanding, but he fears the Lord. All right, and the fear of the Lord is all wisdom. So really, he's more wise than the other man, because the fear of the Lord is wisdom, as we just read in the Sirach the first chapter. And instruction, you know, that's that's what this is. Uh, the fear of the Lord is wisdom and instruction man so you fear the, the, the fear of the lord is going to cause you to what take heed. it's going to it's going to cause you to take heed that's first uh timothy the no second timothy the third chapter it says all scripture is given by inspiration and is profitable for doctrine for reproof and correction right so these scriptures are constantly uh being brought out are constantly being put into the forefront in order to uh, guide us in the way of correction man and all of us need it you see, because we're all still in this sinful flesh, man. So we're never to a point where, oh, I don't need correction anymore. I don't, I don't know. That means you don't need these scriptures no more, man. If, if you, you don't see? need correction, then you don't need Yahweh Shai anymore. And he comes in, and that's the point. If you don't need the yeah. scriptures, he comes in a volume of a book. That means you don't need our Lord Yahweh Shai, man. So we're constantly in the need of correction, whether it comes from ourself through the spirit, through self-examination. Right, or whether it comes uh, from another brother noticing or seeing something that you don't notice, man, right. mm -hmm. or whether it comes completely through the spirit, where it's not from a brother or not from you, but it's from a video from a right. brother in England. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't even know you. <laughs> Doing this whole lesson, man, and you watch it and get cut to the heart, man. And that's why it's important to watch these type of lessons, man. See, a lot of people be caught up into the the controversy lessons, the back and forth, and the, the people getting cussed out. You know. And, and I've been noticing a trend also. Uh, a lot of Jakes tend to uh, uh, take uh, uh, or, or like to watch the comforting lessons too. Oh, you sinned, you fucked up, don't worry about it, keep the faith. Which, once again, those lessons are needed through the Spirit. But if it's not being applied, what's the point of you watching that lesson, man? But see, people watch that lesson just to get that comfort in the bullshit they to continue to do. 
But no, you're supposed to watch those lessons and what? Examine yourself and change and fix the things that's hindering you from growing in the spirit, you know? And the best thing, and the best videos to do that is what? The character um, building lessons, man. The lessons that what? That cut you, man. Like, fuck, man. Maybe I'm moving like this wrong or maybe I'm, I'm doing this uh, too much, man. And that's where growth starts to happen within us, you know? But you got it. Back in uh, Sirach chapter 1, in verse 28, Just trust not the fear of the Lord when thou art poor, and come not unto him with a double heart. Be not an hypocrite in the sight of men, and take good heed what thou speakest. Exalt not thyself, lest thou take fall. Take good heed what thou speakest, all right, what, 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 what you're teaching, all right, what you're pushing out there in the atmosphere, that vibration that you're pushing out there. Got to be careful. That goes back. Take heed how you build, man. Uh, another word for build is edify. All right. So we got to be edifying the correct way and pushing brothers into the uh, uh, right mind frame, the right mentality, in the right direction, which is uh, 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 towards the kingdom, towards the Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, and further fucking away from this world, man. That's right. Because you know? this doctrine is meant to build our character. It's meant to build us into what? Into the image of our Lord Yahweh Shai. Mm -hmm. That's why Ephesians, the fourth chapter, it says what? That the body edifies itself in love, meaning exactly. the body builds itself in love. How does it do that? Through these words. So that we yeah. all can come to the fullness of Yahweh Shah within our spirit. That's why Peter wrote and said, We have a more sure word of prophecy yeah. that you do well to take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn mm -hmm. and the day star arise in your hearts. Who is that day star? That's our Lord Yahweh Shah according to Revelation 22. So it's so Peter was speaking about until Yahweh Shah is formed within us, man. Yeah. We're being conformed to his image, man. You know, he, 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 it says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of our mind. So that's the first line of, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 correction should be within yourself. Analyze yourself. And, and every time you should really come up with a, a couple things that you can work on. There should never be a, a time where you're not working on anything, right? You, we should, uh, we have to be connected with, with, with our inner self because that's what the Lord is looking at. He don't care about the out man. He said, he said, I don't look at the outward appearance of man. I look at the inward. He's worried about the inward man. So every time that we examine ourselves, we got to take a step back from our everyday lives and the bullshit that we go on, that, that we go through, and really sit and examine ourselves and, and scrutinize ourselves, man. Put ourselves under that light, under that under that candle, man, and see. I need to work on this. I need to work on that. Scripture say, if we judge ourselves, then uh, 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 we should not be judged. We, we should not be judged with the world. Pr pretty much, roughly paraphrasing, man. All right. And it said, uh, I just wanted to um, back up the brother when he said that uh, the body edifies itself. In the book of Proverbs, it says, um, "He that watereth watereth also himself." So if you're teaching, make sure you, we are teaching ourselves first, man. All right. I can't just be teaching. Don't eat pork, and then I go and eat pork. That's what Paul wrote about. Yeah, it teaches man not to steal, but doest thou steal, right? Teaches uh, uh, teaches that men should not commit adultery, but doest thou commit adultery? That's hypocrisy, man, all right? And, and, and the more we teach, the more lessons we push out, the more the higher standard that we have to hold ourselves to. Much given, much required, as, as Yahweh Shai said. Right, because this knowledge ain't, 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 it's not meant to uh, uh, make you or, or, or view as this, uh, 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 like guys have a mentality, like the more knowledge I know, the greater peak somebody will view me, or the greater, like, no, that, that, that's the wrong mentality, man, which we're going to go back into this Sirach, the, fourth, uh, the first chapter, you know? The, the number one uh, mindset of getting this knowledge, right, receiving these breakdowns and the understanding of these scriptures is for what? It's for myself, so I can better myself and learn how to please the Heavenly Father in the name of His only begotten Son, that I might receive salvation, you see? That's the first step. And when you love your neighbor as yourself, you're going to correct yourself to make sure you're on point, to make sure you're walking to the best of your ability. And within your walk, as you grow and learn different lessons, you what? You got the next man. You see? Because this, uh, this is the book of Proverbs 9 and 12. If thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thyself. So it starts within yourself first. The brother read that Sirach and it said what? A guy can be profitable unto others, but not unto himself, man. What benefit is that going to do to you? None. So we have to uh, apply this knowledge unto ourselves first and foremost in order to be profitable unto others, man. Right? It says, but if thou scornest, thou shalt bear it alone. So we get in this wisdom in order what? For us to deliver ourselves. 
And it's the same thing while these other people are scorning, right? Their scorning ain't going to affect us. No, their scorning is going to get them fucked up, man. So it's the same thing with this knowledge, with this wisdom. Going back to that 1 Timothy 4, because it speaks about, uh, uh, it speaks about being an example unto the believers, man. So once you come into this faith and you learn this knowledge, then what? You become an example, you see? So you apply these words in this knowledge and you live according to what's written so that others can see you do the same. So others can see you, man. That's why Paul said, be a follower of me as I am of Yahweh Shai. Scripture speaks about mocking a perfect man because the end of that man is peace. Paul also said what? That everything that you heard and seen and received of me do. And the power of peace shall be with you, man. So we're learning how to maneuver in this present evil world. You see? And we have examples before us, man. But you brothers got it. Back in Sirach. Sirach. Yeah. Right, kind of. This is uh, back in Sirach chapter 1 and verse uh, 29 again. Be not an hypocrite in the sight of men and take good heed what thou speakest. Right? So, go ahead. No, go ahead. Please. So if you're taking good heed what that what you speak, that means what? You got to think before you speak. Hey, it says many have perished by the, uh, uh, the the stroke of the tongue, or roughly paraphrasing, by, by the tongue. You know, that's a, a small member, but it's, it can kindle a great fire. Hey, my pops used to tell me a lot, man, when I was younger, your mouth is going to get you into a lot of trouble, you know, and, and that's, that's, that's real. As I grow older, it's like, yeah, you know, your, your tongue can get you in a lot of trouble. That's going to, it's easy to get in. Something else he taught me, it's easy to get into trouble and it's hard as fuck to get out of it, man. So be careful how you speak. I mean, what? Think before you speak. Think every, it says, uh, let counsel go before every enterprise, man. So be, be a, a person that's, um. Uh, uh, thoughtful, all right, full of full of thoughts, man. You don't just the scripture talk about that a man whose um, um, heart is in his mouth. Anything that comes to mind, he speaks it, all right. That's a foolish man, but a wise man, his his mouth is in his heart. It's vice versa. We, meaning before he speaks, he thinks about it, all right. He's being careful of how he speaks or, or of what he speaks, you know. But you he understands how powerful the tongue is, you know. The power of life and death is yeah, on the exactly. It's I, 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 and, 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 and that's the spirit. Because I was gonna quote that, man. The Lord said, bro, he said, life and death is in the power of the tongue, man. Damn. That's heavy within itself right there. And he said what? And Yahweh Shah said, through the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So it goes back to the Romans 12 that we quoted about renewing our mind. That's what this is about, man. It ain't about to be looked at as some great leader or teacher or this great chief high priest and all that madness, man. No. You know? It's to renew ourselves in the image of Yahweh Shah, Right? And, it's just, and James used the analogy, man, because the brother said it's a little member, but James used the analogy of what? A ship. Of a, of a ship. Now, you got this big-ass ship, hey, right? I'm about to, the that's controlled by the, by, by the little right, helm. Right, this right, little right, helm right. in the back. In, in, in the back. See, because when you turn that wheel, it's, it's rudders in the back right. that turns the ship in the water. Look how little the rudder, the rudder is compared to the massive ship itself, man. Or he used the analogy of what a horse yeah. and the little bitty bridle or, or the bit that goes into the horse's mouth and you able to control that horse off that bit that's in his mouth. And a horse is a powerful animal. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a strong, it's a strong beast. So it's showing you that it's a little member, but what? It's a powerful device, man. You see? <laughs> so just like that little bit or that little, uh, I think you call it a rudder at the end that, that you yeah, turn, yeah. you know? Uh, uh, controls that 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 that, that massive ship or controls that powerful animal. Well, it's the same thing within this, within our body, man. That this little this little your little tongue can cause your whole body to go and and and, and be yeah. destroyed, man. You know, but you brothers got it. Yeah. Oh, I had that James, uh, but I I got another one uh, just based off going back to to being with that fear. This is a uh, Sirach. Chapter 18 and verse 27. It says, A wise man will fear in everything, and in the day of sinning, he will beware of offense, but a fool will not observe the time. And like the brother said, uh, hey, understanding that there's great condemnation. Like this, this is something very serious, you know. It's not just, oh, yep, I'm serving the Lord. Uh, like other Yashwamba said, you you humming the Smurf song. La, da, 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 da. Nah, man. It's scary because a hey, one little thing that you could say, that could be condemnation unto you. That's why we have to uh, be aware of the things that we're teaching, the vibrations that we're putting out, and how we're conducting ourselves as well. Right, how we walk and how we perform in the office of a priest, man. Yeah. Yep. Mm. And when we go, when we go uh, uh, and read about the uh, the actual Levitical priesthood, they have to do they they have to be on point with those things, man. 
which is why the Lord put it in the law. Like, look, you couldn't execute the priest's office drunk. You see? Because there were certain uh, uh, things that you had to move and touch. You had to prepare yeah, to sacrifice a certain way. You had to do certain things according to as the Lord said it. It's tedious. Bro, one of them, uh, 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 he told he told Aaron to put the uh, the pomegranate in the bells. Oh yeah. yeah so yeah. that so that I can hear yeah. I can I can hear you through. Because if you walk up without them bells, you will end up dying, man. You see what I'm saying? Like these are different things that the Lord put in there that that, that was that was that was heavy. But it's showing you how how strict the Lord is. So how much more this spiritual uh, uh, priesthood that we're called into, man, mm -hmm. of how we should conduct ourselves, of how how we should move within the ministry, the uh, the, the teachings that we should be uh, 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 letting out our uh, hey, the whole totality of it, man. This is serious business that the Lord has called us unto, and guys take this very fucking lightly, man. <laughs> like the brother said, or the Ashwamba said, man. You know. Smurfs playing, niggas got birds in their head flying around and shit. You know, like like the cartoons yeah. and shit. Like nigga, no, nigga. Like dreaming and shit. <laughs> yeah, man. Jake on the line, you got a goddamn ding, monkey in your head. Just make, no, <laughs> man. You supposed rapping. to be alert and you know. <laughs> you nigga know? rapping a little Uzi song. I, I can't. <laughs> I'm a Uzi. I love my dumb. Like, yeah, <laughs> man. No, we we it's serious business that we're a part of, man. Hey, let all these other uh, uh, guys and all these other women and things let them play with the truth, man. Let them play with the Lord's word and see what's going to happen to their ass, man. But all us that truly fear the Lord, when we hear these words being brought out, man, when that fear resonates in you, like, oh, shit, what, whoa, what was I doing? The scripture said, what? Oh, man, let me correct that. Let me change that, man. Yeah. You know? Because you, it's all type of fucking madness out here and people using the scriptures to justify their own bullshit, man. You got women teaching the, 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 the scriptures. Here it is. They got a whole Israelite day, man. You know? Wait a minute, that teaching the scripture. Oh, he never said that. It, it's clearly Timothy. Uh, uh, Paul clearly wrote to Timothy and, and said, "Look, that's what it is, man." But you see, you got everybody trying to justify their own uh, 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 doings instead of submitting themselves into the word of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai. And we ought not to like, we ought not to be like them, as the Lord told us in Ezekiel the second chapter. He said, "Be not rebellious like this rebellious oh, house, man." So we ought not to be like them. So we got to conform our ways, conform unto the Lord, man, to the best of our ability, according to what's written, whether we like it or not. Whether I agree with it or don't, no, it's what's written. Fuck what I thought or how I feel, my opinion, none of that shit matters, man. We don't read the scriptures and the Lord was, was writing the laws and he said, well, Moses, what you think about this law right here? You think I should, no, he, the Lord didn't do that, man. This one that traces. He wrote it down and said, nigga, this is how we do it. And that's what it is. You know, but you brothers got it back. We got one real quick. Romans uh, 7 and 22, it says, For I delight in the law of the most high power after the inward man. Like the brother saying, man, we got a hey, delight in these words. Delight in the law, man. Whatever is written, that's what it is, man. So we got to hey, take heed to what's written, man. Not trying to make up our own doctrine to please our flesh or anything like that. It got to be according to what's written, man, because the Lord is looking at our inward part, not the one outward, you know? Right. No, because like you said, making up your own doctrine, uh, the brother shared a, a steel shot. I don't know how old it was or, or if it was recent, but a brother shared a steel shot of, um, of an IUIC class video. So now these guys are saying sex is not marriage. Oh, yeah. Where is that at scripturally, bro? All throughout the scriptures, we... The, 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 when, what, 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 what did uh, Isaac do with uh, uh, Rebecca when he took her into the tent? They didn't have no uh, whole big exchanging of rings and all that shit. You see? But once again, like Pops explained, these guys are, 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 are establishing their own doctrine. Yeah. So what? So so they can um, comfort or... or, or, or they, probably a lot of women, they probably had like yeah. a whole bunch of women complaining mm -hmm. about that. Yeah, so they trying to appease the women, so it's like so now this, so now they can easily yeah. jump around now. Yeah. So yeah, I, yeah, I had sex with him, but we didn't get married, so I can easily go to officer such and such now because we didn't work out. That's still adultery, man. And, and you get money off of marriages, right? Esau, Edom, he has you get married and, and stuff like he makes money off of that, man. You get the uh, uh, the government involved, and they, they all in your shit, man. That's that's just a way to make money, man. All right, if, if sex isn't if sex isn't marriage, 
Then uh, what about Isaac and um, and uh, his woman um, Rebecca, man? All right, when she was it Rebecca or Rachel? It was Rebecca. It was Rebecca, right? So when Rebecca came, the servant uh, uh, Isaac's Abraham's servant brought her to him, and uh, uh, immediately he took her into his mother's tent and, and was uh, comforted. How, how do you think he was comforted? They was playing tic tac toe. He asked her what his favorite color was. He hung on her in there, man. He made her his wife. It didn't say nothing about them. Uh, yeah, they had this big old party and stuff like that, man. He gave All right. Her a ring. He didn't get. Uh, you said what? Yeah, he, he didn't, it didn't say that. It, first of all, it didn't say he bowed down. He he got, got on one knee and gave her. She she covered herself, man. She humbled herself, man. So that whole marriage shit. That's all that that, that they're pushing. That's that shit is wicked, man. Hey, if we were to see, if, uh, yeah, I will forbid. But if he was if we was here uh, ten years down the line, there'll probably be a Israelite dating app, man. All right. Hell no. And because these niggas is is comfortable here with the ways of this place, man. They comfortable. They're, they like like a uh, angel said to Edris. He said, "You have gone too far into this world to understand my ways, man." Mm-hmm. All right. And that's these people. Uh, 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 they they they're too far deep into uh, the ways of Esau, the ways of, uh, the, of the devil, man. All right. And that's why they get offended off of uh, uh, certain uh, parts of the Bible, man. Certain laws of the Bible. And the scriptures say that if if a man um if a man see a damsel in the field that's not betrothed. And, and he lay hold on her. You go into that word lay hold. It means to uh, uh, to seize and to grab hold of. Take by force. To take by force, which is synonymous with the word rape. It goes back. Uh, uh, to, I believe it's Latin. The uh, Latin word repare, which means to seize and lay hold. All right, niggas lose their mind over that because you're too far into this world, man. We're in the times of casting off the mortal thoughts, man. I seen uh, the brothers in um, uh, Alabama. I believe that they he had a. Uh, they just posted a lesson. I just seen the title. Uh, called immortal thoughts. All right, immortal thoughts. That's how we have to be thinking. We have to be. Th- it said, "What manner of persons ought you to be? In? A holy and godly conversation." All right, we gotta be thinking uh, uh, immortally. We can't be thinking uh, oh, just America. America's gonna perish. America's not gonna go on forever. All right, the Lord is gonna show that this place is mortal. That this place can be brought down. He's gonna be the one to make war with the beast. All right, and, he, and he's gonna. Uh, Completely obliterate this damn, uh, uh, this damn place, man. This this society, the ways of this world, the fashions of this world, man. And then he's gonna establish a new heaven and a new earth that's gonna rule forever and ever and ever. That's where our mind is. That's where our heart is. Our affection is in the heavens, man. But that that was all I had. Uh, this is uh, back in that Sirach chapter uh, one and verse uh, twenty nine. Be not an hypocrite in the sight of men, and take a heed what thou speakest. Exalt not thyself, lest thou fall. And bring dishonor upon thy soul. And so the Most High discover thy secrets and cast thee down in the midst of the congregation because thou camest not in truth to the fear of the Lord, but thy heart is full of deceit. That's it, man. You know? So all the things, like Yahweh Shah said, man, what's done in the dark shall be brought to the light, man. So all things going to be manifest, man. All things going to be revealed, you know? And that's and that's the beautiful thing about this word, as it is written in Hebrews four, says the uh, the word of the Most High is uh, quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword. It speaks about how it uh, it's a discerner of the thoughts and 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 intents of the heart, man. You know, now in Luke the second chapter it speaks about how our Lord Yahweh Shai, him being what him being a uh, um of uh, the word, he comes in a volume of a book and said that our Lord Yahweh Shai was manifested so that many thoughts can be go ahead. This is uh, St. Luke chapter 2 and verse 34. It says, And Simeon blessed him and said unto his mother Mary, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising of many in Israel. For the fall and rising of many in Israel, man. And 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 that's a prophecy within itself right there. You see? I believe it's Isaiah the 8th chapter. It's another one, Isaiah the 28th chapter. It says what? That Yahweh Shah would be a, a rock in a sanctuary for those that believe. But he will be a stumbling block unto the uh, the rebellious of the nation, man. They wouldn't be able to get these words and these things. It'll be something within the doctrine that's going to cause them to stumble, man. See, in the book of Psalms, it speaks about what? It says that they that love the Lord uh, uh, love his law, and there is no uh, uh, occasion of stumbling. And I'm roughly paraphrasing the scripture, man. No, it says nothing shall offend them. Now, when you go into that word offend, it goes into the, uh, uh, the Hebrew word which means stumbling block. So those that love the Lord sincerely, there's no stumbling blocks in, in the way of them, man. Like it says in Sirach, as his ways are plain unto the holy, so are they stumbling blocks unto the wicked. So something within this doctrine is going to cause wicked niggas to stumble, man. It's like you got the spirit of Jezebel ramping around all these goddamn harlots out here. 
Now they come in, oh, now they can teach the scriptures. Now they can teach a man. You better go sit your ass down. That's wicked as hell, man. You know? Paul said it straight up, man. He said uh, a woman is gonna, should, should, teach, uh, should keep silence in the churches, man. It's a shame for her to speak, man. If she'll learn anything, if she'll learn anything, let her learn from her own husband at home, man. She should have no woman teaching unless she's out there teaching some other women or teaching uh, 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 some children, man. Shouldn't be out there teaching. You got that one girl. She had her man reading for her ass, man. Telling him to bring it out. <laughs> on, the, on, the, on the loudspeaker. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, with, with, a, with a microphone, man. That, hey, the Lord's going to bring. The Lord's not with that, man. All right? Hey, we're, we're here to, we're set up to tell you the things that are pleasing to the Lord and what's not pleasing to him, man. Hey. And there's people that's teaching stuff that's not pleasing to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Things that's, uh, 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 that's um, pretty much, um, that things that could yeah, lead to banishment. Uh, the one in limitations. Right, right, limitations 2, 14. Yeah. Teaching things of banishment, roughly paraphrasing, man. Mm -hmm. All right? Meaning you're teaching stuff that's going to get you and whoever the fuck is following you put to death. If the blind lead the blind, they shall both fall into a ditch, man. And that's where a lot of these other groups is leading you. Straight into the ditch. Straight into the pitch. Uh, uh, into the pit, man. Straight into the slaughterhouse. All right? Straight into the hands of Esau, Edom. And they're going to perish with you, man. We're trying to lead you out of that uh, 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 way. It says that I shall see thy teacher. This is the way. Walk ye in it. Right? Yeah, you shall hear a word behind me because what? You're going the wrong way. You're going the wrong way. So your teachers is set up to tell you, hey, that way leads to destruction. You better get on this path. This path leads to life and, 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 and eternity. And All right? I'm mourning at the last, like it says in Proverbs 5. It says you're going to mourn at the last and say, how have I, how, uh, have how I not obeyed my teachers? Yep. You know? And I didn't give ear unto those that what? Instructed me, man. Mm -hmm. See, this is, the, this is the instruction right here. You know, this is the instruction. We're being instructed on how to move and, and how to please you, uh, uh, our Heavenly Father, name His only begotten Son, in this world of fucking sin. Filth. In this body of death. Mm. You know? See, uh, see, and that's the thing, man. We can't please the Lord in, 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 in sinful flesh. Meaning, this body, and I'm saying it, and I'm saying, I'm wording it this way because it's a scripture in my spirit. This body and the things we do can't please the Lord. What's going to please the Lord? See, the Lord said he don't look on the outward appearance. I want to say one of the brothers quoted it earlier. It says he look on the inward man. You see, that's where the Lord is look at. The Lord looks on the inside. Here's a scripture in Wisdom of Solomon. It didn't say that Enoch didn't. It, no, it says that his heart uh, pleased the Lord, man. His mind, his spirit pleased the Lord, man. His reasoning. That's why King David was a man after the Most High's heart. Why? Because it came down to his reasoning. His fear that he had within Yahweh, why Yahweh shine. It's what made him beloved in the eyes of the Lord, man. So it's the same as us. You know? The spirit that we have, man. See, if, if, and, and understanding that. Understanding that. Look, I got to change this. Yeah. I have to change this. It's the way I think. It's the way I reason. Fuck how I feel and my feelings and what I thought and yeah. my... No, none of that shit matters, man. That's right, that's right. None of that matters. You see? Because if you fear Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, what I thought doesn't fucking matter, man. Oh, when I was thinking shit, that could have got me destroyed. So fuck what I was thinking. The Lord is showing me the right way, man. So this is how we please the Lord. It's through our, through our mind, you know? As the brother uh, Pops read that in Romans... He said, I delight after the uh, uh, the law of the Lord, after the inward man. But if he had finished that scripture, what is it? What is, you still in there? Oh, yeah, you still have I, okay. I was going to read that Romans 2 and 29, but you got that 7. Okay, I'll just read it real fast. Yeah, just finish the Bible. This is Romans chapter uh, 7, and I'll start at verse 21. It says, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai after the inward man. Uh-huh. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind. Which is why we can't please the Lord in the flesh. Which is why what did Paul tell us? Walk in the spirit and we shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's the war. That's the battle that Paul is explaining right here in Romans 7, man. So we have to be what? Renewed in our mind. Now, is we going to walk in the spirit every day, 24-7? No, dog. No. Why? Because we're in this body of sin. He just said it. You know? Well, go ahead. It says, warring, uh, it says, but I see another law of my members warring against... But see, it's a passion. It's a zeal. 
It's an eagerness of striving to do what's right in the eyes of the Lord, man. Yeah, you're going to want to do that. You're going to want to do what's pleasing unto the Lord, man. You ain't going to want to go off and, and then just don't think nothing about it and just go on about your day, continuing doing wicked shit, man. That ain't a man of the Lord right. at all, man. It's like it, here know? it is. Well, I'm in the flesh anyway, so. Yeah, so that's uh, Yeah, so do the it. The Lord know me. my heart. He put me in this flesh. He knew I was going to, he, he knew I was going to do it. No, man. But, but see that, you know, yeah. mom, that, that's how motherfuckers say. Yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> No, man. We're supposed to battle those thoughts and feelings. We're supposed to fight. We're supposed to fight, man. Fight the good fight of faith. Every last one of us, man. Every last one of us, man. You know? That's it. It says, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members, these bodies. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? It's a body of death because it's subject unto sin and the wages of sin is death. So we need to we need to be delivered from this body and into the bodies that don't sin. And if they don't sin, that means no death is gonna come to it, right? Verse 25. I thank Yahweh through Yahweh Shai Mashiach, our Lord. That's the only way you can thank the Heavenly Father. Through his only begotten Son, right? I thank Yahweh through Yahweh Shai Mashiach, our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of Yahweh, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So like the brother was going into with the mind, with the inward man, all right? Because this outward man, this is body, it's wretched. Like, like Paul just said, oh, wretched, this body of death, this body of sin, all right? So we're, working, we're, we're focused on cleaning the inside of the cup, all right? These other groups, they clean the outside of the cup. They got the whole website and everything's nice and cute, right? Everybody got matching, matching garments. That's all cute. Got the staff out there and stuff, man, all right? That's the outside, but if you go into the inside of the cup, it's damn mold and, 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 and boogers and bugs, all right? It says that uh, ye are white as sepulchers. The outside is clean, but inward is full of dead man's bones. Inward, you, you know that you're Israelite. You got the beard, all right? You got the fringes on your on your t-shirt, right? And then, But when you go in into the man's mind, when you go into his heart, right? He's cop, still a nigga. You're right, he, he, he's still dead. He, 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 he wasn't quickened. Okay? That's what the Lord is dealing with. Alright? The, 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 the living source is the power of the living. You know? Yeah, cobwebs everywhere. Spider eggs in the corner. Roach yeah. eggs on the floor. Nigga, mine is polluted. Dirtier than motherfucker, man. But he out there with a big ass beard. You know? See, we ought not to be like them, man. Go ahead. Uh, that's it on that. Yeah. One real quick. Uh, Romans 2 and 29. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. inwardly yeah. So that's going back to us uh, being inwardly, man. The Lord ain't looking at the, the outer appearance, the, the beard, the garments, the, you know what I'm saying, the outer, you know what I'm saying? The Lord ain't looking at that, man. The Lord is looking at your inward mind, you know, your inward man. It says, and circumcision is that of the heart. So your mind is where is he's looking at, yeah. man. Where your mind at, you know what I'm saying? Is it is it cleansed from all the filthiness? The brother was saying, like, all oh, there ain't nothing but cobwebs on it. It's filthy as hell. You know what I'm saying? But you got the outward appearance looking all good, but your inward appearance, man, is wicked as hell. The Lord going to destroy your ass, you know? And, and that was the point, but I'll read, finish it off. It says, and in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of the most high power. Right. And like the Elder Yashwamba said, it's all about your intentions. We're going to fuck up. But when you fucked up, what was your intentions? Was you doing it intentionally, or were you do it? Un or did you do it unintentionally? There's a difference, man. And even a balance within that, you know, because your intentions it, 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 it had to get you fucked up too. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure that um, I want to say his name was Uzziah. That grabbed, that grabbed the ark. Pretty sure his intentions was right. The ark was falling. His intentions was right. But what did he do? He the Lord told him that he wasn't a Levite. You see what I'm saying? So even our intentions, man, I'm pretty sure Peter's intentions was right. When Yahweh Shah said, I got to be crucified, I'm going to die. If you, 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 the Lord, the Lord forbid, you ain't going to suffer that. That wasn't, that wasn't according to what's written, though. What did Yahweh Shah tell him? Get behind me, Satan, because you savor his things that's of men and not of the Father, man. See, so hey, we have to make sure that even within that, our intentions lines up with what's written. It has to be according to the scriptures and what's written. You know? So that shows you how deep this battle goes. That, that, that's man. This battle, you can have sincere intentions, but those intentions could be off. There is people in these other camps that's sincere. 
They sincerely serving the, uh, they, you know. They sincerely, sincerely yeah. going off. And they right. sincerely right. fucking going off, man. Right. Their intentions is like, no, I want to learn the Lord. I want to love them. I want to, but, you know, they sincerely fucking being led to destruction, man. Right. And then what shows, that's why, Go ahead, that's what I'm saying. saying. And like you had mentioned, those intents have to be filtered through the scriptures. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because even with them, it's like those guys that might have uh, uh, good intentions in those other groups. You start pulling out precepts. Well, this precept says this, this precept says that. And then the precepts come out and, and then they still go after that way. Well, I ain't trying to do that. And it, well, hey, what the, what the precepts say, you know? So just even in that example. But I have one. Oh, but, but that you can, you can bring that out. But that just goes back to that scripture that you read in Sirach that uh, pretty much a wise man will fear in all yeah, things. Yeah. Everything is like, everything. Just, just going into that, it's like, man, that shows you really how deep the battle goes, man. It, it's, it's a lot deeper than just being... Knowing that you're an Israelite, man, we're really going into the to the depth of our soul and making sure everything is according to what is written, so that when he comes, he'll accept us, man. But you got it. Kind. This is a. Uh, I don't know if somebody read this, but uh, Jeremiah 17, and um, I'm gonna start at nine. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Right. So our mind, all right, is uh, uh, it's naturally wicked, man. So that's why it's a constant battle to filter it through the scriptures because the scriptures aren't wicked. The scriptures are righteous. Mm -hmm. So when we lean upon the scriptures with the proper understanding, we'll move in the right way. It says in verse uh, 10, I, the Lord, search the heart. Right. So the Lord, he's searching our minds. All right. That's why the brother quoted the precept in the book of Sirach. The trial of a man is in his reasoning. A trial is a test. All right. So that battle, that test, that fight starts within here. And that's why the brothers explain it beautifully through the spirit. This has to be corrected. Then everything else will uh, uh, follow, man. All right, the scriptures talk about, um, we were reading it, uh, I believe it was yesterday at, or at class in the book of Luke. Talks about how uh, uh, an evil tree, all right, cannot produce good fruit, you know? And that starts with that, what, 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 what's uh, in our mind, what's in our heart, man. So if you got a wicked mind and a wicked heart, it's going to show forth in those actions. It's going to uh, show forth in what you're teaching. It's going to show in that fruit. It's going to show in that fruit. And your fruit is uh, what? The, uh, the fruit of your lips. That's your right. Your speech. That's right. Your fruit is your uh, your actions that you put forth, your deeds. Mm -hmm. They'll you know? eventually come out. Mm -hmm. And like the brother uh, uh, mentioned earlier, uh, pretty much all things are going to come to light. I was holding in the book of Ecclesiastes, the last chapter. All right. It says uh, everything is going to be brought to the forefront, man. Forefront. And the Lord is a righteous judge. Everything is going to be taken into account. All right. People's intentions, what was actually done, all those things are being weighed in the balance of the Lord's judgment. So we want to make sure that, shoot, all right, the first, all right, let me make sure my intentions is right. First and foremost, okay, all right, my intent, all right, uh, I got good intent, but damn, am I going off here? Am I going off there? Right. I didn't mean to do that and this and that and the third, but what's, what's actually, what's, what am I doing? You know? And going back to the scriptures to, to figure these things out. Well, yeah, the scripture says this. All right, well then, shoot, yeah, you know what? I ain't, I ain't even, I ain't even all offended in that way, or whatever the case may be, man. Huh? But it says, uh, verse ten: I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. So at the end of the day, everything is going to be brought into judgment. You know, so we have to be very mindful of moving in the fear of the Lord, like the brothers been saying uh, beautifully. And I have one more to go along with that, if I may. Well, uh, two quick ones, so after you, this is the book of um, Isaiah 55 and uh, 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found, call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way. So our way, leaning upon our own understanding, which the scriptures tell us not to do in the book of Proverbs, the third chapter. Come, man, this is seven. Proverbs 3 and 5. It says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. With all thine mind, man. All right, so our trust has to be uh, according to these scriptures. It mm -hmm. says, trust in the Lord. That's trusting in these precepts. Man, move like this. This precept says that. I'm going to trust and I'm going to move according to that, man. Go ahead. And lean not unto thine own understanding. Right. So, hey, that, and, and that's a battle, you know? Mm -hmm. That's a battle because you want to, it's natural for you to just, well, I think this. And I'm just as comfortable to do that. Well, I can't lean upon my own understanding, you know? We have to lean upon wh what's written. Yep. You know? Mm -hmm. Hey, I was just going to say, because that, that's it, man. Because the first thing that's going to uh, kick in in situations is the flesh. You know? Yep. Uh, uh, a situation might arise, or, or you might be uh, presented with a conflict. The first thing that you're going to think of is, is, is the flesh, man. Right. But that's when the spirit has to kick in. That's right. You know, because it's not, it's not, uh, 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 we're not in those bodies yet, man. We, we still, we still in this flesh. That's why it says that what? That a, a, a trial of a man's reasoning is in his thoughts. 
Right. Yep, yep. Hey, and like you was uh, uh, saying, the first thing that kicks in is, uh, uh, or tries to kick in is the flesh, right? That's what that instant, well, it's like uh, when you're being attacked. Well, it's, it's like just to finish because it's automatic. Right, right, right. What it's I automatic. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the fleshly reaction is automatic. That's that's why we in this body of sin. Because mm -hmm. the first reaction to anything is always fleshly, man. Yeah. It's yeah. always fleshly. Right. But see, a man, uh, 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 what it says, a wise man will fear in all things. So that means he's considerate. So he's going to sit back and hold on. Am I tripping? What is the scripture? You know, and and, and reason according to and, and instead of letting yeah. uh, 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 that, that 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 emotion take control, and and that's hard as fuck, man. Mm -hmm. And I can speak for myself. That's something I continually battle with to this day. Well, you know, tell the end we're gonna battle with it. Yeah. Hey, but you know, some brothers get even better with it. And, oh, we're gonna you know, get better. You know? We're gonna continue to get better with it, but it's still gonna con. Yeah, it's still yep. gonna constantly. Yeah, I wish I battled all the way into the end, man. His flesh was it was getting weak. That's why he said what he said in the garden, man. He said the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak because he was going through that battle that that Paul spoke about, man. All right, the, uh, uh, the the battle of his members and the battle of his mind, the battle of the flesh and the battle of the spirit. The two are contrary with one another, and they're at war. And when certain situations like the brother uh, uh, was going into, when certain situations arise, instantly the flesh tries to overpower the spirit. That's why the scriptures say make no provision for the uh, flesh. Don't feed the flesh, man. All right. Of course, you have to give the flesh what it needs. You have to go. You have to eat. You have to drink. You know, on certain occasions, because you, you should. But you have to eat. You have to drink. But at the same time, you got to fast, too, so that that strengthens your spirit. So that so that that way your spirit is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. So when these do when these different occasions do occur and do arise, the spirit is gonna kick in faster than if it was you know if you're working out. If I'm constantly working out, you know I can get get right into it, man. All right, I, I can get right into it. I, I'm used to it. It's a routine. It's something I'm I'm used to doing. But if I'm not working out, I'm getting lazy. Then those muscles get weak. So it's gonna take longer. To, uh, it's gonna be more strain on the body. All right, so that's why we have to constantly feed the spirit every single day. We do things for the flesh every single day. How much more for the spirit? So that when all hell breaks out loose and his flesh wants to act crazy and wants to act weak, the spirit is going to allow us to uh, 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 to stay strong and trust in the Lord, man. All right? Well, I was just going to say, uh, like uh, they use that term, uh, fight or flight, you know, yeah. with animals. All right, when an animal feels uh, threatened, they immediately, what, I got to fight? Or Instant. I gotta run away from it, you know, mm -hmm. and that's what happens in the flesh at times. It's like, shoot, yo, yo, you, you try justifying it, or yeah. I ain't do this or that, or yeah. you feel like you yeah. get attacked. So it's like, hold on, now nah, you trying to fight against you, it. You, know, you, you well, battle yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, well, escape to, it. Exactly, and that's how it is naturally in the flesh. So it's like at times, like correction, we can't look at correction as a, as an attack. Let the righteous right? smite you. That's right, exactly, because at times correction can feel like I'm being attacked, you know. Like oh I'm this is happening that nah it's 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 for our benefit and it's uh, uh and also knowing that even with brothers like that brother obviously hey, he we trying to look out for one another you know and sometimes those things kind of get out the way when we in those moments like the brother was talking about in that moment in that time it doesn't feel good you know it doesn't feel good and it's 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 easy to to justify man I ain't do this and that I ain't mean you know all these different things happen but we have to we have to be able to try and keep our flesh under subjection yeah. reflect so that what we can make adjustments because at the end of the day we have to make adjustments that would that's what allows us to grow because if that uh, correction happens all right and because of all those other reasons you you know us trying to whatever the case may be if we don't make the adjustment then then we didn't get growth from it we want to get growth from everything that we can through the spirit, man, by making adjustments, man. But sorry. I'll just finish on this Proverbs 3 and verse 6. It says, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. And that's what we want, man. Hey, he said, Those that keep my I will be a guide to them that keep my precepts. Roughly paraphrasing the scripture in 2nd Ezra 16 chapter. So we have to continue to acknowledge him in all our ways and everything, man. Scripts say, be not confident in the plain way. So even the smallest matters, man, the smallest matters. We got to make sure that we're, what does the Lord feel about this, man? How is how is uh, this going to affect, uh, affect our relationship, man? All right. Is, is this what he likes? Is this what he doesn't like? Is he okay with this at this time? He may be okay with it at a different time, but at that particular time, it's not, it's not uh, beneficial. It's not, it's not behooving. 
So that's how deep it goes and acknowledge him in all thy ways. Not 90%, not 95%, 100% of the time. We got to make sure we're checking the, the, the thoughts that come into our mind and make sure that they're of the Lord. Because the brother read it, the heart is deceitful above all things. If you're leaning upon your own understanding, you're leaning, you're, you're leaning upon deceit, deception. You're leaning upon wickedness, all right, which is going to lead to death. But it says, verse 7, be not wise in thy own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. Man, that's heavy. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. You got I was going to say, it says, be not wise in thy own eyes. Now, the scriptures talk about uh, uh, knowledge fucketh up. So at times, you know, uh, being, just being a, a prophet and servant of the Lord, rebuking and different things like that, uh, uh, you can get, um, well, we can get caught up in used to cursing everybody out else out, going out on the highways and byways. Pointing the finger. Yeah, pointing the finger. And, and that's what the, the prophets are set up to do. It says, cry loud, spirit not lift up thy voice like a trumpet, yeah. and show my people their transgressions. Shake the hand. Isaiah yeah, 13. exactly. So we are supposed to, now, nah, you going off, hey, that's going off, that's going mm -hmm. off. But like the brothers, uh, like the spirit had us going into earlier, it starts off with us first and foremost, man. So sometimes that knowledge can puff us up to where we can't do wrong, we ain't wrong, and it's like, nah, we got to acknowledge, like, Shit, I am wrong. Because uh, what, what did uh, Isaiah have to go through? You know, before the Lord had sent him out to go preach, what happened? That cold. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Oh, said, what? He said, your, your, your sins are yeah. purged and forgiven. given. So what? So how do we be purified? By taking heed yeah. to the word. Yeah, so right. it, it, so start, it first starts off through obedience. Right. Through us being obedient and cleaning ourselves. And then what? Now, now we're uh, 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 capable vessels that the Holy Spirit can can work in to work through. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I hope I made sense by that by, by that statement, man. Because it says that, uh, uh, what is that? First Timothy, the second chapter? Or it might be second Timothy, the second chapter? Uh, uh, the the verse. It speaks about in the great house are not only uh, the vessels of gold and silver. You want it? I mean, I, I can just okay. quote it, okay. you know. But it speaks about if a man purge himself from these, purge ourselves oh, from what? Right. From that filthiness, man. From that dross that was on us, if we purge ourselves from that, then we're what? Capable vessels. We're, we could be vessels, meat for the masses use, prepared unto every good work. The brother like bringing out a, a precept in Proverbs. It says, bring forth. Take away the dross of water. Yeah. And there shall come forth the vessel for the fire. Who is the fire? That's our Lord, Yahweh Shah. So he's able to use us, man. Perfect. You see? Now, when we go back into the law, we go back into the scriptures, it's clear. Right? For instance, the example is... um. Is um the nigga that took the Babylonian garment? Oh, uh, uh Aiken. Aiken. The water. I knew it started with an A. You know what I'm saying? Now, now we was whooping ass all throughout that, right? But when he did that and we went to war, what happened? We lost. We uh, lost. That shit. So Joshua off. asked, like, Lord, what, what happened? Every time. The man. Lord said, What? It's iniquity in the midst of you. Therefore, I can't be amongst you because of that. Man. That lines up with Jeremiah. That lines up with Isaiah. It says, What? Our sins is what separated us from the right. heavenly Father, man. So if there's any type of iniquity or any type of, uh, of bullshit within us, then that right. Holy Spirit, that presence of the Most High, the cannot Spirit. be with us right. in wisdom of Solomon. It right. said it'll flee a malicious soul. It said it will not dwell in a body that's subject unto sin. So first and foremost, we have to correct ourselves in order to continually be used as that vessel to push forth that 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 that. That live in water, man. Right. You know? Just just as quick as you are, uh, as, as we could be to say you're going off, you're going off, we have to be even quicker to say that we're going off, man. Yeah. I'm going off. You got to look in your mirror and cuss, cuss yourself out, man. You're going off, man. What the fuck is you doing this for? You know you should be doing this. You know you should be doing that. And, and the more you do that, the less you're going to get cussed out by someone yeah. else, man, because that's the next level. The next level, if you're not examining yourself... Uh, your, your neighbor is going to come and search you out, as the scriptures say in Proverbs, man. And you should be hard on yourself. See, we out there cussing out the people that don't, they don't know. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But you doing this and that, nigga, we know better. Exactly. So we should be harder on ourselves because we know these certain things, man. That's right. You know? That's right. First thing, hey, hey, you got to point your finger. Hey, uh, before we out there shaking the hand, before we out there showing this, we got we to gotta deal with that man in the mirror first and foremost, man. That's your biggest enemy. The biggest enemy in this walk of ours is the man in the mirror, or the woman in the mirror. Yeah. You know, when we say man in the mirror, a lot of times we say man, we talking about mankind, we talking about Israel as a whole, man. Yeah. You see? Because women have those different thoughts of, well, I should not, I ain't got to be subject to him. Yeah. I ain't got to listen to him. Well, no, but the, see, the scripture should pop in your mind when that happens. Oh, my, the scripture says I should be subject to my husband. So that's you fearing the Lord. That's showing that you is bridling yourself. That's what the Lord delights in. 
You see? So it ain't just the men, it's the women as well, man. Right. We all within this walk of faith. We all going through these different things. You know, Thank you. as a woman, you're not gonna just get into the kingdom and you're just a fucking asshole to, to the man that you're under. Just because you're under him, you think you're finna get into the kingdom, man. It's not gonna work like that, man. Look what happened to Lot's wife, man. There was there was men of the there was men of the Lord who had women that got put to death, man. All right, they had women that got put to death, like Ezekiel. He had a he had a wife. She was put to death. Uh, uh, Lot. Um, we don't know what happened to fucking Job's wife. All right, to, or to Job's fucking wife, that she was, uh, he even cussed her ass out. He said, man, you sound like one of the foolish women, man. It don't, it doesn't say what happened to her, but the script says she that is my enemy, the same shall see it, man. So everybody has to be walking on, 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 on uh, like the apostle says, like a deer uh, 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 with the mad lights, man. All right, you have to fear, we have to fear in all things. The scriptures say before judgment, examine ourselves, and in the day of wrath, you shall find mercy. The day of wrath is right around the corner, so we, not you, but we, should be examining ourselves daily, man. We should be examining ourselves, scrutinizing ourselves, and, and, and seeing what can I work on? What can I do to, uh, 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 to, to better myself and to better my relationship with Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, my power? Hey, uh, just because um, I was sitting here thinking, uh, you know, based on what the brother Matathia was saying, he said, he said, you know, a lot of times we'll, we'll point the finger, and but we got to examine ourselves. I remember as, as a shorty growing up, you know, somebody, they would always tell me that. They'd be like, hey, you, oh, when, when you're pointing out somebody, when you're, you're, you know, pointing something out, always remember that there's three fingers pointing back at you. That's, that's what you were saying? Yeah, like, hey, that's the spirit, true, bro. I like that. Hey, hey, because uh, uh, like the scripture says, it says that, that uh, the servant that knew his father, uh, his master's will and did it not shall be beaten with many stripes, man. So that, hey, we, we, we got to remember that as we're correcting, hey, three times or more, you know, like, like, like the saying says, examine ourselves, man. We got to nip that shit in the butt. Oh, there's an example, too, as a father. Like, you know, a father would say, for example, you're the older son, so he shows you things, what he wants around the house done, and things like that. Your thing your thing is to show the little, the, your little, uh, uh, you know, brother to, to show how to do it. Yeah, now, and if it's exactly, if it's not done, the father going to come to you. He's going to be like, no, you knew. He didn't know. You know, he cool right now. But you knew. So, so I'm going to beat your ass because mm -hmm. you knew how to do better. Right. You know what I'm saying? He, he gets the pass right now because he didn't know what to do. You know, you were supposed to show him there, man. Yeah. But he's going to come to you, man. He's not going to come to uh, your little brother, man. Yeah, like, you know? know that uh, higher uh, accountability. You know, yeah. knowing these things, man. No cloak. Right. Hey, uh, what do you have? What should I say? Um, to whom much is given. The water. That, that's yeah, exactly it. Given, that's exactly it. Perfect. To whom much is given, well, much is required. required. We has been, and we have been given yeah, much yeah, just yeah. by having the names of Yahweh, Yahweh Shah, just by knowing that we Israelites, man. Right, right, you know? Right. That's a, that's yeah. that, that, that's nothing light. Yeah, the name is not light. It says if you name the name of the Lord, depart from iniquity. That's that's a commandment. If you have the Lord's name, now you have to run the fuck away from iniquity, man. Because <laughs> once, well, once we wake up to the fact and remember, right, that we Israelites, guess what that remembrance comes with? Yeah. Nigga, now we in debt. Accountability, yeah. yeah. Now we in debt. That was us that said, uh, 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 um... Uh, uh, everything that's written within that uh, within the book, when Moses sprinkled the blood on the congregation, you know, he said, "All that the Most High have said, we will do." And throughout and throughout our history, we had certain kings at certain times where we, we made oaths and said, "What man? If any man will not seek after the Lord, yeah, right? Whether it be man or woman, uh, whether it be uh, uh, big or little, roughly paraphrasing, in Second Second Chronicles fifteen and thirteen. Oh, I got it. Uh, Start at 12, Bible for shot. Kind of These things apply unto us, man. You know? So coming into this faith, man, hey, 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 hey Yahweh Shah, man, hey, he took that deal for us. So once we wake up to the fact, hold on, we Israel, knowing that Yahweh Shah died for us, now we're in debt now, man. That's why Yahweh Shah said, had I not come and spoken, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. Why? Because this word is being preached. It's been known. It's been declared that Yahweh Shah gave his life for ransom for what? For the nation of Israel, man. So once we all hear this word, now we're indebted unto Yahweh Shah now. Now we're his servants. What are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to walk? All those ones that rejected him, guess what? Well, they now they gotta now they gotta deal with that, man. They gotta deal with that. You see? Meaning all that debt and all those things that that, that, that was piled up over the years, they gotta pay that in full. And what's that? That's what they like. It ain't gonna be no no easy just oh yeah, uh, yeah get beheaded no, no no the scripture speaks about dwelling in torments man international peace 
See, this is the end, man. This is the end, and there's a lot of judgment that's going to be going on in these times to come, man. Matter of fact, in these times, we're in already. Matthew, the 24th chapter says, what? This is the beginning, beginning of sorrows. Yeah. This is just the beginning. It's going to get worse, man. It's going to get worse than what it is, you know? So we have to prepare our minds to know that, man. I don't want no smoke. I don't want to be caught up in none of this shit out here, man. Especially when the missiles come. No, man, I'm trying to escape all that. So how can I escape all that? By taking heed to what's written, man. By walking in the ways of the Lord to the best of our ability. The Lord ain't going to leave us lacking. What did he say? He said, I gave you pastors. That's going to teach you. That's going to feed you. Not leave you lacking. So that means what? Not only are there, they, they, they expounding the secrets of the Lord unto us, but what? They're being righteous examples of how to walk and live in this present evil world, man. You know, but I'm rambling too much. You brothers, get your precepts, y'all guys. I'm going to get this real quick. Uh, Ephesians 4 and 22, it says that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. So we got to hey, put off that old man, man, because that old man is going to constantly try to come back to your life and, and take over it, man. So when you see that old man come, man, you got to rebuke that old man and, and be like, that's the old man. You got to put that old man to death. You know what I'm saying? You got to kill that old man. You can't no longer allow that old man to to come in and, and, and rule over your life. You know what I'm saying? Uh, read on, it says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So I, we got that new mind. We've been born again, man. We got a, a new, we a new man now, man. So we have to live according to the scriptures, man. Not according on how we used to live or how we used to think. All oh, that shit is dead, you know. It says and that we put off the new. Uh, it says that you that ye put on the new man, which after the Most High is created in righteousness and true holiness. Hey, so hey, we got the, the blueprint, man, on how to live, on how to walk, how to think, you know what I'm saying? So we got to walk in that in that path that the Lord has set up before us, you know? That's right. That's right. That's it. Because in that path, yeah, I was already cleared it for us. It's um, a couple of scriptures throughout Isaiah where it speaks about um, cast up, cast up the way. It's, it's a highway that's set. Yeah, remove the stones out of the way, man. You know? And that's what Yahweh Shah ultimately did, and what the men that came after Yahweh Shah, you know, the apostles during that time, and what also today, the apostles during this time, and the, uh, the elders in Connecticut, and the heads of the uh, the elders that came in 07, and so forth and so on, man. They're removing those stumbling blocks out of the that that highway, that way of righteousness, man. So it says, "Come unto her as one that traceth." In the book of Sirach, man. So we're following that path that was already set. We're building that building that what the blueprint is already given, man. The foundation already laid. Yeah, the foundation already laid. We just add them to, you know. Here it is. The, the blueprint already written. The foundation already laid. And the nigga come in. Well, you know, I think the foundation should be over there. I don't think we should start building right here. Well, no. Nah, see, this room, no. Nah, it needs, it needs three the more windows in this room, right? Nigga, that's not on the blueprint, bro. Nigga, you ain't a foreman, nigga. You ain't the supervisor. Nigga, you none of that. You just got hired yesterday, and you coming in thinking you finna change how this building is hey, being built. Go grab some bricks or something. Who the fuck is you? The blueprint is already written. Just like when Moses got the vision of the, uh, of the tabernacle. He was warned, and the most I told him, make sure you build according to the, the, pattern. the pattern that I showed you. Same thing with King Solomon. King Solomon had a pattern. He, King Solomon just didn't build the uh, the temple the way he wanted to. Yeah, put yeah, make the window here. Yeah, make the priest room there. No, no. King David gave him the instructions. King David received it through the Spirit because the yeah. Lord showed him, linking him with Moses, right? But it showed him, showed him what the blueprint of the temple, and King Solomon went and executed it. Same thing in Genesis 1 and 1. The Most High had a blueprint set up. And when the Alahayim went to go execute it, saw they it looked good. and said they saw it was good. According to what? According to the will yeah. of the Most High, man. That's it. So it's the same thing as us coming into this faith, man. Yeah. Coming in thinking you just finna change some shit or you finna move a bit. No, nigga. You know? It's, it's like, nah, it just reminds me, you know, as a kid, you know what I'm saying? Your mama tell you to clean your room up in a specific way. You know what I'm saying? Before you get your allowance, you know what I'm saying? You had to have it, all your chores done. So she'll come and look, make sure everything was in place. 
You know what I'm saying? Be like, oh, nah, this ain't it. So you don't even get your, right. your allowance and shit. You just bullshit. Yeah. You just throw everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah,
put me in these situations. How, how are we proven? Through, through the trials and tribulations. So King David asked for those different things to be put through. <laughs> you right. see what I'm saying? Right. And he said, and yeah. see if there be any wicked way in me. So put me in this situation. In the fire for me in the fire. Right? And see, and, and, and you know, no, okay, I, I, I prove myself. Hey, put me in that, you know? He asked for that, man. That's a heavy prayer right there, you know? That's right, that's right. That's right. It says, and see if there be any wicked, uh, be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. That's, it. that's heavy, man. So he asked the Lord, examine me. All right, knowing that we, even knowing that we in this filthy flesh, he's like, man, examine me. Hey, when I'm in the fire, put, let me, allow me to go through the fire. All right. And then whatever I'm doing wrong or how I'm wrong, whatever the case may be, then lead me in the right way. And that's a comfort as well. All right. Because what? He was like, and lead me in the path everlasting, man. So if I'm doing something that's wrong, that's not acceptable on that side, something that you aren't pleased with, let me reveal that unto me so that I can correct it, man. All right, let me uh, reveal that unto me so I can make the proper adjustments. You don't think King David was making adjustments, man? You know, when he was put in that fire, when he was being examined, when he was tried, you know? Of course, man. Yeah, I got, I got just to back you up on what you were saying. This is the book of Job, chapter 34. And, um, is that brought forth the gold? Uh, no, that's not. Oh. This is um Job 34 and 31. It says, surely it is meet, meaning it is good to be said unto the Most High. I have borne chastisement. I will not offend anymore. That which I see not, teach thou me. If I have done iniquity, I will do no more. That's man. right. That's right. So, uh, so what we don't see that needs to be corrected, we got to pray and ask the Lord to show those things. And through the Spirit, he's going to show it. That's it. He's going to show it, man. Hey, because our spirit makes prayers and intercession for things that we don't even, uh, what's the word, cognizant of, man, that we really don't, you know, but our spirit is already alerted to certain things, man. Yeah. And the most high it, it, it is working. Hey, it's a scripture in Isaiah, and I'm still like at, in awe of this scripture where the Lord said, um, before you ask, I'm going to be there giving it to you, man. Well, to be honest, the Lord is doing that now with yes. us, man. Yes. He's doing that now yes. with us, man. You know, a lot of times, you know, I, I think, you know, I have a thought about something and, you know, and, you know, and, and it, it'll just be a thought that's in and then it's gone. Right. You know, the next thing you know, that thought is already, man, like, like, like man, man, hey, you know, certain things brothers pray for and ask for, man, hey, the Lord, you, you see the Lord work that out, man, hey, man. Right, that he was already working on it before you even set your mind to pray. For it was pray already, it was already in the works. It was already in the works. You know? It was already so the Lord had the plan already working out before you even decided to pray for that, man. And this, this is the power we serve, man. We have to understand. This is the power we serve. Once again, he's the omnipotent power, man. Meaning all powerful. He can do all things, and we must get to the point in our faith where we know that and believe that, man. You know? And even within that, that's a process in the faith. You know, that's as we progress. Yahweh Shah spoke about what? Our faith being as a uh, as a grain of a mustard seed. He said, you shall say to this mountain, remove and be cast into the sea. You know, the, just the power of a faith. Just the little faith. The power just on a little faith. But the longer we in this faith, we do what, man? We nourish that faith, man. Water it, Right? We take care of it. Give it light. And it grows, man. And it was supposed to. Our faith is supposed to grow. You know? So we're supposed to become stronger within this thing of ours, man. That's what this is about. You know? Being purified. Because when that time comes in, in the days uh, 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 um, that we're in and it's only going to get worse, our faith has to be on a whole nother level, man. man. To be able to see the things that we're going to see. To be able to endure the things that we're going to endure, our faith has to be on a whole nother level, man. And it's going to be known who was fucking playing around and who was bullshitting, you know? Because right. hey, the scriptures talk about uh, how our uh, faith is uh, tried with fire. Our uh, faith that's tried in fire. Right. Right. Yeah, James. James. First Peter. I thought it was James. I was thinking about the one in Peter. The trial of their faith. Yeah. 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 One. yeah kind of. Right. Right. Oh. First Peter. Uh, one and seven, okay. that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire. Right, and the fire is the affliction, right? 
So my, when we in hell, when we catching hell, when we going through our afflictions, that's when our faith is tried. Is, is in what? In these words, and our belief in these words, holding fast into these scriptures. When we in those situations, like, man, this is tough, and this and that, and the third, but. Well, the precepts say this, and this is how I got to move. Then. Fuck it, you know? And when we go according to that, that's showing that we really believe in the word. We really believe in the scriptures as opposed to, well, I feel like this and this and that and the third, so I'm going to just lean upon my own understanding. Because that's what happens, man. That flesh rouses up to get you to, man, forsake what the scripture says. Do what makes you feel good. Lean to your own Yeah, lean upon your own understanding, man. You ain't got to take heed unto this, man, because of, and, and then Satan will throw it into your mind and make you feel like it's justified because of how you feel. All right? How we feel never justifies us moving outside of the fear of the Lord, man. It never does. It never justifies us moving outside of the fear of the Lord. Well, this happened and I felt this. That shit don't matter, man. You think, hey, hey, even when I always like using this example, man, Job lost everything, man. His uh, his flesh was fucked up, his substance, all right? Woman co coming up against him and this and then the third, and the Lord came down and still had to check Job, you know, had to, uh, had to check him, man, you know? Just because he was going through all that couldn't mean that he could just be uh, saying whatever, whatever the case may be, just tying in the, the point of moving in the fear of the Lord is always the priority regardless of how we feel and what we think, man. But you got it. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Yahweh Shai Mashiach. That's right. And that was the point, really. You know, it's going to be tried with fire, man. And like the brother had mentioned, it's like it's, it's going to be known who is bullshitting or not, man. Hey, because when these afflictions come, it's going to see who actually believed in these words, who actually is going to stand on what's written, man. And Yahweh Shai said it. He said, I'll liken a man that heareth these things in mind and doeth them as a man that built his house upon a rock. So when the waves beat upon that uh, house, all right, the storm uh, and so on and so forth, that house didn't move. All right, that house wasn't moved. Why? Because it was built upon a rock, because he was applying these words. But the man that heard these words, and he wasn't applying them. His house was built upon the sand. So when the affliction comes, when the hell comes, that is going to collapse because he wasn't taking heed and applying these words. So we need to be making sure that we're taking heed and applying these things now. So when it really gets rough, when it really gets tough, we built upon that rock. Because right. hey, it's perception. It's how you how, how, how you see these different things that we're going through, man. You know, like uh, I made a statement to these brothers a while back. Satan, Satan is our sparring partner, man. You know, like read, read, read Job. Your brother mentioned Job. Satan is our sparring partner. See these different trials and tribulations and things we're going through is only preparing us, man. You see, it's preparing us. It's teaching us a lesson, and it's the same thing with Job. Now, when we read Job, the first chapter says what? That Job was what, what, uh, a, a perfect man. Upright. It said he was upright. <laughs> it said he is true with evil. The Most High was boasting on him, right? So he went through all those trials and tribulations and afflictions. Now, the totality of the book of Job, when you you don't just get the whole to total uh, dynamic of, of his, his friends came against him, his woman came against him, like the brother was explaining. His um, his uh, he lost his health. Right? He his lost his wealth. His children. You know, he lost his. So he lost everything. And Job, and the reason the Most High was mad at Job, mm. right, is because Job felt he didn't deserve to go through what he was going through. So the Most High had to correct him, like, look, are you more righteous than me? So I'm punishing, so I'm having you go through this uh, for nothing? That would make the Lord unrighteous if he's just punishing each and every last one of us just for the hell of it. Just because he liked it, I'm going to just put this nigga in the fire because, you know, what it says that in Wisdom of Solomon as well. Like, it's not agreeable with the Most High's uh, power to punish him who is not worthy to be punished, man. So, Job was a lesson for us, man. Even though we serving the Lord, we doing this, we doing that, there's still things that need to be worked on. There's still a mindset that we should have walking forward. The Lord used Satan to humble Job more. At the end of that, Joe realized, like, oh, well, shit, I was wrong the whole time. And the young, the young cat was the one that had the proper counsel. Right. Because he the one that told Joe, but you you think you more righteous than the most high or something? Or, you know? So he had to bring that understanding there. That's right. You see? And that's exactly what we're learning. So Satan, the afflictions, the trials, the demons, all that shit is what? It's preparing us. But what's to come, man? Mm -hmm. It's just sparring, man. Right. Training.
For what? For the hour of temptation. That's the game. Championship battle. You see? Right now, what we in is practice. It's spark practice? Practice? Yeah, you got niggas that don't like to practice. Guess what? They ain't going to be in the league no more, man. AI. You know, well, I, I ain't going to use AI. It, you know, that was taken out of context, but, you know. Because AI was still a baller. That nigga, you know. I think I think they was tripping because he was going through some shit and he missed, missed the practice or whatever, some some shit like that. But that's When you actually know the background yeah, of that, yeah, of that story, you know. But face value, like the brother said, face value, it did look like that, you know. It did look like that. So you got guys that that, that, that that take this lightly or or this ain't something serious. Well, when game time starts, they ask they gonna know what to fucking they don't know what to do, man. Right. They don't know how to run the plays and this and that man and that and that would like I know even playing like playing in school and everything like that, if you couldn't run the plays, your ass couldn't get on the field. <laughs> that was it. You know useless. what I'm saying? You was useless. Hey, like, you could have been athletic and this and that and the third, but nigga, if you didn't know when the quarterback called this play or you, time, the defensive, uh, uh, your defensive captain or whatever is on the field and he called this and that and the third, if you couldn't execute what was done, it didn't matter how talented you were, it didn't matter how fast you was, nigga, they wasn't putting you on the field because you wasn't going to execute with the unit of what was being done. And it's the same thing. When we ain't going into game time, we got to right. know the play. The coach's game plan. Exactly. The nigga, it ain't your game plan. Right. Nigga, I'm going to go out here and run yeah. uh, outright. No, nigga, I told you to fucking right. run a slack. Right. And now, if you ain't doing according to the coach, you gave you the, nigga, you getting off. No, I'm going to put somebody off. in who's going to, he might not run it as fast as you. Right, but he's going to run it. But he's obedient. And he's going to fear going you back know? to that Syrah. It's uh, a, a man that has uh, much wisdom. But fear not the most high is less than what the brother read the precept of right, the right, 19, right. man. So that man, tying it into that analogy, he's going to move in fear. Well, this is what I need to do. I'm going to do it, you know. This is what the play is. I'm going to execute that. This other dude, shoot, he going to just do whatever the hell he want, you know. So we can't be like that. And, yeah. and like the brother said, in the heat of the battle, because that's when it matters the most. You can always, after a game, look back at film, you know. Like, I should have did this and I should have did that. But we coming into the time where we at the end and it ain't going <laughs> ain't gonna to be too much looking we be, back. We should be doing that now. Right. So right. The, the so when we go into certain situations, when the Lord deliver us out of it, that's the time to watch the game film. Right. So now go back, reflect on that situation, and, the and be like, well, okay, I could have did that better. Or I could have moved in that way better. And I could have did that better. And so yeah. moving forward, right, if that situation presents itself again, now I know how to handle it or conduct myself in it, man. You know? So, mm. I'll get this real fast. This is pro uh, Job 23 and 10. But he knoweth the way that I take when he have tried me. I shall come forth as gold. What, he, what you just read? Job 23 and 10. You got it. Uh, but he knoweth the way that I take when he have tried when he have tried me. I shall come forth as gold. So when we're in that fire, we're hoping to come, come forth as uh, pure gold. My foot have held his steps, his way have I kept and not declined. That's Man. keeping that's keeping his words, you know, acknowledging now, him and everything. While we're in the fire, in, in the fire, while I was being tried, I kept his ways, I kept his words. All right. Now afterwards, reflecting on it, we have, we pray for uh, uh, that wisdom meet us in every thought. Man, it says in Wisdom of Solomon the sixth chapter, so that when we're going through these different things, this precept is going to get me out of this situation. This precept is going to get me out of that situation. Or it's going to allow this situation to go smoother than, than it could go if I lean upon my own understanding or if, I, if I'm in my own emotions and in my own feelings. It says, um, Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. So this is everything to us, man. This is the most important thing to us, our, our most prized possession that we have, man. This is what makes us who we are. And, and, and the love for this, it says that we have um, uh, treasure in uh, earth, earth and vessels, vessels, man. This is a treasure in our eyes, and we don't want to lose this treasure over some fuck-up in these last days, all right? In these last seconds, we can get the victory. The championship is ours, all right? But a small mistake, you know, a small turnover or, 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 or a fumble or miscalculation, whatever it may be, it's 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 a thin line, man. So we have to continue to uh 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 um walk uh tread lightly right. to fear the Lord with uh serve the Lord with uh fear and trembling, man. Yeah. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Hey, like they say in football, they call they call football a game of inches. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Meaning each 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 step is 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 is, is important, man. You know. So.
So we want to continue to what? To move forward. Each you know, first happen. down. <laughs> you know, get first downs, man. Just using a football analogy, we don't mm -hmm. want to lose yards. We don't want to be moving backward, man. You know? Yeah. Because that's what detrimental to the team's success. And that's actually putting the other team in a better position to beat you, man. Yeah. So we want to continue to move forward, man. You know, as uh, Peter wrote in uh, 2 Peter, the third chapter, the last verse, he says, uh, grow in grace and in knowledge of our Lord, uh, Yahweh Shai, man. You know, what you got, bro? Con, I was just going to uh, bring out a point in that Job uh, 23. Another brother read uh, Job 23 and um, uh, 12. It says, neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have the, or verse um, 10 again, but he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. My foot hath held his steps. So this is how we're going to come forth as gold. You know, this is this is what's going to make sure that hey, we get that victory. It's holding forth, like the brother had mentioned anyways, that word, man. Holding forth the precepts, man. And and the little things that we go through right now is going to build us up for that time. So don't take the, the affliction that you're going through as just, like the brothers mentioned earlier, it's just, ah, this is whatever, this and that. Like, nah, it says the spiritual man judgeth all things. Why am I going through this? Or what is the Lord showing me? What can I work on in this situation? How can I benefit from this, this hell that I'm going? Right. Can I become more patient? Maybe I can learn this. Maybe I can learn that. Because all every single bit of hell that we catch can be for our benefit if we actually uh, uh, make adjustments through it. It's a reason. It's a reason for it, man. That's you a, know, it's a it's 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 a re everything we suffer. There is a reason for it, man. You know, you got Jake with the mentality they going through some. Oh, it's Satan. Satan just fucking with you. It's Satan. Satan just nigga. Satan ain't just fucking with you for no reason, bro. All right. <laughs> That's, you know, he's it's, it's to the test Lord. us, man. He's working for the Lord. So, so those things, everything we go through is to better us in some type of way. So we got to uh, examine ourselves to find out that 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 reason, man. Right. Like the brother said, whether it be I'm lacking patience or whether it be I'm lacking uh, 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 sincerity, whether I'm lacking faith, whatever it may be. Right. Whatever it may be, man. Maybe I'm doing too much in the flesh on this side. A lot of times, it be self-inflicted uh, uh, trials that Jake be going through, man. <laughs> you, you be putting yourself <laughs> in a deeper hole. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Proverbially speaking, man, Satan be sitting there just cooling. Nigga be like, man, Satan, man. Satan to look like. Yeah, that was what? you. Bro, I didn't even do nothing, bro. <laughs> Just like, then you just blame everything on me, nigga. I'm over here working on Esau brain, bro. I ain't doing shit over there with you, nigga. <laughs> you know, it's mad as hell as Satan. He ain't did shit. You know? But you, you got it, bro. Oh, you, I got something. It says Job uh, 7 and, uh, and um, 17. What is a man that thou shouldest magnify him, and that thou should uh, set thine heart upon him? And that thou shouldn't visit him every morning and try him every moment, man. You know, so everything's a test. Everything we go through, like the uh, brother said, it's for a reason. But what are you going to get out of it, man? You can you can think uh, in a negative way and be like, oh, well, you know, uh, I'm doing something wrong all the time, this and that. Or you can be like, okay, look, guess what? The Lord's trying to show me something there so I can benefit from it. So I don't do that again. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you say something's hot, you know, you touch it. Ah, I'm not going to touch that again. I know that's hot. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to move in a different way, you know, according to the scriptures, man. That's right. You know, so you don't have to fall into tempta temptation again. You know, That's because right. Jake don't be thinking sometimes and, and it happens again. Like the brother said, it's self-inflicted, man. Even though the Lord already showed you, that's not cool to do with, man. You know? Right. Uh, I got a quick combo. Lamentations 3 and uh, <clears throat> uh, 32. It says, but though he caused grief, yet will he have compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. So at times we catch hell. All right. We go through afflictions, all right, it's grievous, and the Lord is still showing compassion, man. All right, he's still going to look out, still build us up, and so on and so forth, right? But that's not the point I want to grab. It says, uh, verse 30, uh, 33, For he doth not afflict willingly, nor grieve the children of men, to crush under his feet all the prisoners of the earth. So the Lord ain't just stomping us out like, man, I'm, you, fucking, you fucking niggas, man, I'm just stomping y'all niggas. Like, nah. All right, there's a purpose to the things right. that we're going through. It says he can use power when will. In right. wisdom of Solomon 12, you know? Right. Yeah, like if the Lord wanted, he could have just wiped us out and whatever. He, man, the Lord could have did, completely fucked us up if that was the Lord's intent. But no, he's... Yeah, like, like the Lord a child. You know, a uh, motherfucker got an accent. Right. You know, he just 
letting ants out and putting the magnifying glass on them, just burning their ass and shit. Like, the Lord, just a little child just fucking up. No, man. There's a purpose and reason for everything we going through, man. That's right. You know? It says, all things work for the uh, good to them that love Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai. So the things that we go through, even the trials and tribulations, is really for our good. It's really for our betterment right. to make us better one way or another. And it's, it'd be up to us to figure out what, why am I going through this thing? Or, or why, what, was that the right reaction? Did I react according? Uh, uh, did I lean on the Lord with my reaction? Did I lean on to my flesh with my reaction? We want our, our instinct, our, our instant reaction to be lean upon the Lord. Our instant reaction to think about a precept so that whatever situation that occurs, that's that's going to be our way of escape. And that comes through the training. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you learn to Most fight or something. Yeah, mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, you got to uh, fix your stance, you know, mm -hmm. uh, how you throw a punch properly. See, naturally, you would be just, man, I'm going to hit the nigga. But no. You gotta yeah. learn what uh, what they call the mechanics of it, man. Yeah, mechanics, uh, of, of knowing how to and the, the placement and all that, man. That comes work. through yeah. practice, man. Right. You know. Yeah, you you drill it. You gotta drill it. You know, you you gotta keep on working on it. Keep on working on it. It's not something that's overnight, man. This is a process that we're in. When you're purifying gold, you're constantly putting it in and putting it out, putting it in and putting it out. Oh, still more. Put it back in. Turn it up a little bit more. All right. That's the process that we're going through. Gold is trying to furnace. An acceptable men in the furnace of adver adversity, and like it, it said in that Job, hopefully when we br be brought, when we're tried, uh, uh, we'll be brought forth as gold, as a, 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 a pure, uh, um, that that pure gold, that pure uh, precious metal, man. That's right. You know? Kind of had this. Uh, he said. He said in, uh, in the book of Isaiah, I believe it's forty-eight or forty-six. He said, "I've chosen you in the furnace of affliction, yeah, man." He's looking at us while we're going through these different things, and how is he reacting? What is his mind frame? What is his mentality? You know. Where, where's his spirit at? He's looking at the inward man, you know? Yeah, hey, and when you go into that word chosen, um, when you go into, I think it's the uh, Strong's or the Hebrew yeah. Child Lexicon in the Isaiah 48, the brother had quoted, it says, uh, examine, you know? So that's when I'll, I'll look at it like this, like, man, when we in that fight, that's when the Lord is really examining us, man, you know? Almost look at it, it's like, that's when the attendance is really on. How are you going to react yeah. in this fire right here? Because it was easy when you didn't need the fire. That's, that's, it's easy. Yeah, that's, that's the point of the fire. That's the rock six. It says, uh, uh, prove a friend. What, yeah. how, what is, how are we being proved? Yeah, in the fire, sure. man. It's through, yeah. it's through the fire, man. Yeah. You know? Ooh, it says that a, a, a friend cannot be known in prosperity. Right. A adversity. friend is known in adversity. So when we're in that fire, when we're catching that hell, that's going to show if we believe in the Lord or not, if we're relying and trusting on him or not, man. Yeah. When we're in those moments, that's when it truly matters, man. Not when you got everything and everything cool and you comfortable easy. and chilling. Right. It said every man, a uh, friend, uh, partaker at the table, then right. everybody in chilling. In prosperity. Yeah. But when that adversity comes, man, you still sticking strong? You still believing in the word? As it says in Sirach, the second chapter, when thou art changed to a lower state, cleave unto him. So in those moments, we're supposed to cleave to the Lord even more yeah. in those moments, man. Yeah. So it's all a purpose, you know. Hey, that's why in the book of Isaiah, it talks about, um, though I give you the uh, the water of affliction and the bread of adversity. It calls it the bread of adversity. Bread is what used to nourish, you know. You take bread, it's, it's uh, uh, the scriptures talk about there are certain things that are needful in a man's life. It talks about water and bread and different things like that. See, that adversity is really building us up. It's really nourishing us. The scriptures talk about in the um, Apocrypha how the Lord nourished us with discipline. So these things are for our benefit. These things are, are, are helping us out, man. But like the brother mentioned earlier, it's all about perception. You can take it like, nah, this is really training for me. All right. Or you can get mad at the sparring nigga. Like, man, fuck it, man. Take off the gloves, man. I'm whooping this. Like, nah. Like, and then even I was going to bring out the example. Like, you have mentioned the, uh, the sparring partner, right? Now, we want to be mindful of what the, uh, we have to be mindful of uh, different things that we're going through, what the Lord is showing us. See, that sparring partner, it's like, all right, he might just keep hitting you in the face. It's like, damn, why the fuck I keep getting hit in the face? All right, maybe my guard is not up high enough or whatever the case may be. Certain things that continue to happen, it's like, man, it ain't, we just can't get mad about it in, in, the, in the sense Find of, a solution. Yeah, we got to find a solution and, and see what do I need to adjust. Okay, this keeps happening. What do I need to adjust? Where do I need to move? Because until we get to that point, it's like, well, I'm going to just keep stalking this nigga until he fucking get knocked out. And it's like, I, now I have to move now. Yeah, put your I got him. hand up. That's <laughs> you know? why I'm hitting you, because you need to put your fucking hand up. This is why I'm putting you through this. 
You right. know, sparring is really a, a learning lesson. Everything that we go, like brothers say, it's not a, a, a loss. That, that, well, even in boxing, they say you don't lose in sparring. You can only learn, right? It, it's not an actual bout. It's not an actual fight. It doesn't go on your record. Sparring is meant for what? For you to learn and for you to get better. So these different trials and tribulations or these sparring sessions with Satan and the afflictions that we go through, that's only for us to what? To get better. And whatever hits that we take, okay, I need to lift up my hands. All right, or I need to bring my hand back. Don't let it drag. Okay, don't leave it out there. You know, whatever it may be, that's how that's what we have to focus on. So now, now out after that sparring session, your coach told you, boom, or you realize that nigga done lumped me up because I wouldn't put my hand up. So now when you go after that, you go and drill drill that to keep your hand up, man. All right, or to keep your chin down. Nigga caught you on your chin and dropped you in the sparring session. So now you go in when you're training. Before the next sparring session, that's what you're working on, keeping your chin tucked. And you go do different things to uh, to allow you to um to do that, man. You know, whatever drills, you know, put a tennis ball under your under your neck and shadow box or whatever for however long. Then the next time you go into that sparring match, your chin is down. Now the nigga can't find your chin. Now he's hitting his shoulders, you know. Uh, so each fight, get, we get better. Each sparring session, we have to get better. If you don't do make no adjustments... After that sparring session, he's whooping your ass, and you go back and spar with him, and he's he gonna do the same shit to you. Yeah, and he's gonna keep beating your ass <laughs> until you fucking make the proper adjustments. If that's if it worked, I'm gonna go back to it. Now, if it's not working, now I have to find something else, and that's Satan. Yeah. You he'll be fucking with you on a certain thing, then it, you completely destroy his ass on that. Nigga, that doesn't move me no more. So then he'll go and find something else. Okay, you finally keeping your hands up. But now your body is exposed, or your footwork isn't isn't the greatest. So now I'm, you know, uh, 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 float like a butterfly, sting like a bee on your ass. So now that's something else that you have to work on. You're always getting better. You're always working on something uh, 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 um, because we're not perfect yet. You know. Yep. This is Hebrews 12 and 6. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening. Mm -hmm. The most high dealeth with you as with sons. And that's the key point. It says, if ye endure chastening. Because at the end of the day, just like Jake, Jake as a whole, we all catch a hell. We all get fucked up, all right? And so on and so forth, right? So we have to be those good sons that endure chastening, humble down. Like, all right, damn, you know, like, what do I need to do? You know, uh, make the adjustments and so on and so forth, right? Because when our people, when they catch hell, they don't, they don't uh, 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 make adjustments, all right? Hey, the scriptures uh, call our people, uh, what, reprobate silver, man? Right. They start questioning the Lord mm -hmm. when they go through shit, man. Instead of questioning the own sh their own shit that they right, doing, right. man. You can question the Lord while you're in that situation. Question your own self, man. All right? Ask yourself, well, how the fuck did you get here? Why am I in this position, man? You know? Just to back you up, Jeremiah 8 and 6. I hearken and heard, but they spake not aright. No man repented him of his wickedness, saying, what have I done? Everyone turned to his course. As the horse rushes into the battle, and that's the mentality of the majority of our people. They never reflect, what did I do? All right. What am I what am I fucking up in? What do I need to adjust? Exactly, man. It, yeah, because people got a fucking uh they're self-entitled, man. People have people feel like they, they deserve this, they deserve that, they deserve the best. So that when those things happen, when they get jacked up, when they get humbled, then they don't realize that it's the Lord, man. You know, it, 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 the scripture says how the Lord's judgment goes out daily. But when these people get judged, they don't consider that, it, that hey, man, it's, it's, it's the Lord fucking them up. Yeah, yeah. It says, uh, Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 7, If ye endure chastening, the most I deal with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? <clears throat> but if ye be without chastisement, whereof all the partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Uh, and this is the point I wanted to grab, verse 9. It says, Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? So just like a father, all right, your uh, actual father on earth, all right, he would be the one that was supposed to correct you and so on and so forth. Or you, whether it's an older brother. Right, right. your mama. Like whatever was your parental uh, or, or your, um, what's the word? Got, got, um, guardian. guardian. Your uh, disciplinary figure, man. You know, as as a child growing up, we all had ones that were what discipline us in a certain type of way. So me, uh, for an example, was my OG, was my mom. If she said something, nigga, I made sure that I ain't do it around her. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I gave her that reverence, cause what she whooped my ass according to some shit she didn't like or or, or so or so on. 
So how much more the most high, man? That's right. You see? This is what Paul is saying, right? Mm -hmm. In verse 10, it says, For they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit. And that's the point. See, all the chastisement that we go through, if we endure it, it's going to be for what? Our profit is bettering us. It's doing something in us. It's working in us. Now you're more patient. And, I'm, and once again, during it, it doesn't feel that way. But when you actually go back and reflect how you are, how you were before that hell and how you came out after it, you recognize, damn, I'm more patient. All right. Uh, I'm, 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 uh, I'm a better brother. You know, I make better decisions. I, I'm, I'm walking in a greater fear of the Lord to not do that, to not do this. Everything you always you recognize that you came out better right. if you make the adjustments. It right. says because that's the godly sorrow. Yeah, that Paul first, spoke about in Second Corinthians uh, seven chapter. You know, might be the ninth seven. chapter. Uh, it's one of them. Early it that. speaks about uh, how godly sorrow worketh uh, repentance. Uh, uh, repentance, not to be sorrowed after. And then he goes on to speak about um, what great zeal it brought from that. Right. What great circumspection. What fear. You know. So it, it adds up to all those things, man. You know. Yeah. Your circumspect, your circumspection level. Right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, let's apply it to like uh, Madden or NBA 2K where you put up your attributes and shit. Right, right. Hey, you each thing. Yeah, you know. <laughs> now our, I'm on alert and shit. Right, our attributes is uh, awareness, you know. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's coming up more. 70, now right, it's right, 78, right. you know. Yeah, man. Niggas, yeah, niggas go crazy for that 2K my player shit, man. They I'm put spending their, money yeah, on Yeah, right. yeah, but how much more in the spiritual sense, man? Yourself. Yo, your Yo, person come up, you know, nigga right. spinning around, <laughs> got a headband on <laughs> and shit. You looking at your attributes, damn, yeah, nigga, my dunk is only at 60. I need to fucking go work on my bunnies. I need to work on my dunks. Or you got brothers that play Call of Duty. You know, right. you got certain weapons that uh -huh. you can uh, 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 yeah. experience and, you oh, know right, what I'm saying, right, the game. Right, you right. know, it's the same thing in the faith, man. We're bettering ourselves through these different things, right, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so when we come out of those different trials and tribulations, those different uh, uh, afflictions, we should be better than the man we was going into it. You know, because we yeah. learned something out of that, man. Mm -hmm. You know? Otherwise, you're going right back into it. Yeah, you know. Now you're gonna have to go through pretty gonna, much the same shit again. You're gonna keep tripping over that same stone again, again, man. You know? Yeah. It says, For they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Hey, because the Lord isn't just bringing old raggedy ass niggas. It's, you know what I'm saying? The Lord, the Lord is refining us. You know? He wants us to be purified in our spirit, in our mind, man. You know? So we have to go through these things. All these things are for what? So that we can partake. All right, we can part we can make it to the kingdom. The first go around, man. All this is leading up into that, man. Like we was, you had mentioned about Enoch earlier. Said that his soul pleased the Lord. All right, his soul pleased the Lord so much, man. The Lord was like, man, I'm take, I'm just taking him now. Come back, <laughs> coming right back. To Come me. back up here. Same man. thing. And yeah, yeah, Enoch was an example, man. You know. Matter of fact, I think it said it. It says that uh, uh he had uh. No, it's, uh, it spoke about how how these things was done to show that he had care for his elect. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, to the end but because that. that's what the Lord is doing in Matthew the twenty fourth chapter, the Lord said, uh, uh, "Unless uh, no flesh shall be saved, the days shall be shortened." So the Lord, te technically, the Lord is hastening to deliver us out of this place, man. The same way as it said about Enoch, how he hastened to deliver him out of that. Well, the Lord has got the same mentality toward us, man. Yeah. You know. And we have to know that and believe that, man. Right. The Lord is shortening these days for our sake. Why? Because he's hastening to deliver us out of this fucking hell, man. You know? And hey, that should be the mentality, man. I want to please the Lord so much that he just take me out of here, man. Yeah. You know? And that's, what, that's, that's what's going to be the elect. You know? The elect is going to do that. So then this should be a mindset of like, what do I need to do to please the Lord? Like, man, I want to I wanna make him that happy. Man, he's going to be that happy with me. To where he's just going to take me out of here, man, from among the wicked. That should be our mentality and our mindset. So us knowing that we in this flesh, it's like we got to be on, on game. Like, shoot, constantly correcting ourselves. Like, all right, let me make an adjustment. That's going to please the Lord. Damn, if I can do this better, that's going to please the Lord. Man, if I'm doing this, man, I, I know that's going to please the Lord. And continue to do those things. Wait, that ain't going to please the Lord. So let me refrain from that at all costs. Because I'm trying to get the fuck up out of here. I want to hear those words. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Like uh, uh, the heavenly father spoke of Yahweh Shai, man. Sure. Yeah, I got this real quick before you read that with Come. me. It's the brother Benji. Benji Button, uh, 144. The brother of Tazawani out in uh, Chicago. 
This is Sirach 44 and 16. Enoch pleased the yeah, Lord was and was that. translated, meaning he was beamed up, man, right? Being an example yeah. of yeah. repentance to all generations, yeah. man. Yeah. You know? Yeah. There it goes. It says, um, I'm going to read Wisdom of Solomon uh, chapter 4 and 10, then I'm going to jump down. It says, he pleased the Most High and was beloved of him. So that living among sinners, he was translated. So he pleased the Most High and was beloved of him, man. You know, so we wanna we wanna do what's pleasing in his sight, do what's acceptable in his sight, so that this happens to us. Jumping down to verse fourteen, for his soul pleased the Lord. No, just read through, bro. Okay, read through. Okay, come on. verse eleven. Yea, speedily was he taken away, lest that wickedness should alter his understanding or deceit beguile his soul. For the bewitching of naughtiness doth obscure things that are honest. And the wandering of concupiscence that undermine the simple mind. Right now, we got an example of that during the time of Maccabees, man. Where we had the priests, they were standing strong in their courses, right? They was praising the Lord, offering sacrifices. But when that law came down and, and all that wickedness was spread through Antiochus, what happened, man? It said that those same priests didn't have the courage to serve at the altar anymore, man. Mm -hmm. So that bewitching of naughtiness obscured their mind. You see? Go ahead. It says, verse 13, he being made perfect in a short time fulfilled a long time. For his soul pleased the Lord. Now, once again, this is the inward man. All right? This is his mind, his spirit. This is all in the inward man. All right? It wasn't because his beard was long and this and that and the third. No, this is the inward man, his reasoning, his thoughts. Right? It says, for his soul pleased the Lord. Therefore, hasted he to take him away from among the wicked. This the people saw and understood it not. Neither laid they up, up. So they, so they saw him translated, man. It says, this the people saw and didn't understand it, man. Neither did they lay up in their minds what? Go ahead. That his grace and mercy is with his saints and that he hath respect unto his chosen. That's it, man. You know? So once again, they, that, uh, linking that with the Sirach 44, hey, Enoch was uh, an example unto us, man. So it, the same uh, uh, mindset the Lord had toward Enoch is to how the Lord has to his elect in this uh, in this time today, man. You know, these things are speeding up and things is happening at a fast scale. Why? Because the Lord is hastening to deliver us out of this madness, man. You know? Hey, so, man, hey, that's it, man. That's it, man. Hey, hey, for why do you Hashem, you shy, man? You know, because through the spirit, man, hey, this was a heavy lesson, man. You know, like, like, hey, I feel it in my spirit, man. As, hey, as brothers were speaking, as I was speaking, that I was eating at the same time. You know, as it is written in Proverbs, man, it says, he that watereth, watereth also himself, man. You know, so, hey, man, I, hey, I, I'm glad to be a part of this lesson, man. So, Lord willing, we hope that was edifying. For giving us the spirit to do this lesson, we're going to give all praises, honor, and glory to. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers preaching the gospel in truth and in sincerity, always in charity. Hey, shalom, Akiyan. Shalom.